fourth meeting I've been to today, and everybody has said the exact same thing. And um, I, you know, I, I can't control what Bart does or doesn't do. Um, I will have that discussion with Bart. Um, I actually know somebody uh, that works here in, in San Francisco, so I will have a sit down uh, with him and discuss that. Um, you know, the, the commute issue for drug dealers is interesting because it's always, in my 20 years, I, when I was at Mission, it was every single one that you arrested had a BART ticket. Public transportation, I don't even know what to say to this. I mean, it's, it's really, it's an issue, and yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. But I will have that discussion. We're like I'll try front, to address it. We're like that. the front door. They just get off and we're right here. Yeah, yeah. So what do we do about solicitors that work in the Tinder line, uh, who give us jobs here, but uh, they service other communities instead of supporting the people here? I don't know. Well, it's sort of like dealing drugs. You got people who live here, but people don't, people know them, but they don't uh, do business. They do. They, you know, they're personal with people here because, you know, they employ people, but they are, uh, they service other outside communities. Instead are you talking of, about resources? You know, are you talking about resources? Or are you talking about right. drugs? Solicitors, residents of the Tenderloin, mm -hmm. who solicit, uh, solicit things outside the Tenderloin, which bring the room in for drug dealing. Because, you know, they're the hospitality house. I know these people, but uh, there's people who come in mm -hmm. off the, you know, off the, the business name of the hospitality house. But the corporation of the hospitality house does business outside of the tenor line. So you want to see more businesses in tenor line so servicing tenor line? People have employment. Okay. There are people who employ people here, but... Uh -huh. They solicit to people outside the Tinder. Right. No, I understand. They spend more time outside okay. the Tinder. Right. Than um, within the Tinder. I don't. I don't know uh, if that's necessarily something that is for me. Well, that's how the people. Really? That's how the drugs come over. Okay. So okay. So you're saying outside people are bringing it into the tenderloin line and not. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> Employers who are confused. <laughs> Employers, okay, this is for the employers who are here, but they don't do business, they don't provide business with us. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, why don't we talk after? We can talk after more about it. Because I, who are you talking about now? You guys are easy. That's not, you got to throw me a hard one. I do have one thing. You know, outside the country, you know, I mean, I, I moved away from the tenor line to get away from drugs. And I, whenever I come through the tender line, I have to walk through somebody smoking crack. And I see a police officer across the street arresting somebody huh? for uh, something other than the crack he's being smoked on the sidewalk. And I wonder how come they can turn a blind eye to public consumption in this neighborhood. Uh, I wouldn't say that we turn a blind eye. If we are dealing with one issue, we can't leave that and go deal with another issue, really. I mean, you're, you're saying that Public intoxication is better. No, I'm saying better people than smoking crack on the sidewalk. Okay. As you're walking well, you know up Larkin Street, I mean, it's on the first and the third of the month, you have to pass through that neighborhood. Uh -huh. I mean, every third person is smoking a pipe out in the open. And I mean, okay. across the street are the people that keep their stuff on the sidewalk and sell stuff on the sidewalk. Well, the police are more trying to run them off than worry about the drug deal, the drug activities. And I'm just wondering. How come nobody's addressing? Is it uh, a safe zone for people to do public consumption? Absolutely not. So what you've just described is a lot of things going on at one time, right? right. So it, it's kind of like um, you have a table full of food. Which one do you pick first? Do you know what I mean? So, so you, so drug dealing for you, for you, drug dealing's up here, and I understand that. Our complaints majority of the time about the public intoxication, someone drunk on the sidewalk, and making sure that person's okay. Um, not always drug use, because drug use, it's gone within, they're gone within seconds. 
the drunk person on the ground or the person selling uh, without a permit is there for a longer period of time. So our window is, is very short when it comes to somebody consuming narcotics. Yes, have I seen it? Yes, I have. But the amount of people, it, it's tough. It's tough because you have to pick and choose. What, what are you going to deal with? Well, I, I, okay. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about how I've seen on several occasions where there was none of the other stuff going on, but down the street there's a whole bunch of that activity going on. But on this block, someone just bought a beer that's drinking in the street. The cop would come along, hit the can of drink, and pour it on the street and give them a ticket. We don't want to see that a negative going on is still going on for that block. Now, everybody knows there's a negative going on in that block, but no one seems to deal with it. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. I heard just a long time ago that the city has made this place a drug containment center where all the drug activities are contained down here. If that's true, then the city has to change that policy because we are actually human beings too, and we deserve to live in peace and have a, and have a good life. And uh, to allow something like that to go on is just unthinkable. Okay. So um, I'm not going to say which one is better to take care of, okay? I, I had this conversation with a guy that I had throw out a beer. And there's literally, so we have sit lie, we have drinking in public, we have uh, public intoxication, a lot of different things that we're dealing with drug use, drug sales, that we're all dealing with, right? So when we talk about um, somebody drinking a beer, that's obvious, right? There's times where I think someone's smoking crack and they're smoking a cigarette. You know, it's, there's, this is very much in my face all the time, right? Um, so my question I pose to the gentleman that was drinking is, you know, what is it that is, is evident right now? Is it smell of urination, people um, defecating in public? Uh, you know, what are the issues right now for us? Um, you know, a lot of that comes from drinking. Some of that comes from drug use, but a majority of that is coming from drinking, from people that are intoxicated 24-7. Because they can't get to the restroom. They can't go, you know, walk down the block to the, to the public toilet. So, you know, I'm trying to deal with the things that are present itself right now. My feeling is kids should not be thinking that's a norm, right? So they shouldn't grow up having to smell urine, right? So well, I'm trying to deal with, you know, one thing at a time. I'm definitely dealing with a drug issue. And trust me, today I was taking on people left and right saying, your time is, we're not, we're not allowing you to loiter to sell drugs or use. It's not going to happen. So we have to, we're gonna pick our battles one thing at a time because we can't just come in and all of a sudden say, done, right? So it's gotta be one thing at a time. And, you know, I wish I had a, you know, magic pill that could just make it all go away, but, but we're really trying to, to address one issue at a time. And the fact that the museum is opening, I mean, that's a, that's a good sign. That's, that's a very good sign. Huh? Tim Lunch. Yeah, open Thursday. Question, Captain. Yes. Captain, question. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, you said earlier when you were in your presentation about, like, connecting some of the other streets, because I know um, Captain Churn was working with Blue Spray. We kind of sponsored developing all of these little individual block uh, safety. safety groups, uh -huh. which we put one here. Uh -huh. And I know there's others, you know, some of the other blocks. But you said something about trying to bring those groups together. Is there something like this? Is there going to be some sort of coordinated effort to actually coordinate these groups together somehow? Um, you know what? I actually left it up to the group that I met today to invite other groups to join in. Um, it really, you know, that, that whole thing is something that the community started doing. I mean, they empowered themselves to, to start a safety committee, which is great. Um, for each block. Now it's it's maybe it's time to like bring everybody's ideas together and start building on those ideas as opposed to being independent. Because then you know you you can deal with us, but okay, so we have to be over here because you're going to have this program, and we have to be over here. Well, at what point are people going to go? Well, I'm, we're more important. We, we need we, we need you over here, and then we need you over here instead of just kind of working together for one for one thing at a time, kind of picking our battles. Because, I mean, for me, it's got to be, it's got to be attainable. 
the ideas have to be obtainable. They have to have success. Because if you don't have success, then you, I mean, the ideas are, are good, but it doesn't mean it's working. So some things might be, be more tweaked than others. Because we have our neighborhood watch for this block, and we'd like to expand it. Which is a great idea. Um, when you do your next captain meeting, I know you all get together and talk about issues. Um, is, could you bring up the idea that other cities are adopting um, to ask your commission, um, and we could uh, possibly support you on that issue, to uh, put out a request for people to share video with the department? We're already doing that. Oh, good. Thank you. So um, a lot of this, we ask for lighting, we ask for, vid for video. Um, and it's not, we don't watch it live. We have so many policies. Um, one of my jobs was Special Investigations Division. And one of those, the policies was, was basically First Amendment right. So there are very, very strict policies in regards to watching video. Um, and we've had very good success in, in while using our, our policy that um, the restrictions actually have given us more access to, to people because it's trust, right? We're not gonna go and watch the video live um, and really get in people's business, right? That's really what it's about. So you have that privacy, you have that, um, uh, your rights really secured when it comes to San Francisco. Um, the buildings, the newer buildings, we've asked for video. People are actually giving us video for the drug dealing to look at it and say, you know, what is this activity that's going on in front of, I don't know, uh, Jones and Golden Gate? What is this activity? Because we're experts, right? And so we can identify when you're talking about hand to hand, talk about, you know, something that might be simple as pills or um, fake IDs or whatever it might be. So the videos are being shared. Um, when a crime occurs, everybody's great about sharing that video. We have, we have stills people, we have videos of crimes being, um, actually long videos of incidents that happen um, with great pictures. You okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but it is, it is definitely being done. We have to move on, so I yes. thank the captain. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna take off. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm, majority of the time I will be at the station. Um, if you have any questions, you know, please come by, email me. Um, my email is on the list. Uh, a lot of times that's quicker than to to call. Okay. Is the district in which direction is it expanding? So we're going from Gary. Oh, on the right. We're going from Gary to Mission, but we don't have Gary. We don't have Mission, and then we're going from Venice to Third Street, and we have neither one of those streets yet. Yeah, we're located on Mission Twenty Fifth and Sixth, so we will be following in your defense. No, but we're coordinating. I just had a meeting with the captain of Southern. We're going to be coordinating our resources because what will happen um, is bad things will come your way if we start pushing, so we want to make sure that we have consistency in those areas. This mission is going to, is going to be an important street. Because anything that borders uh, districts can be very vulnerable um, we turn down the to, to different issues mics. drug dealing, that kind of thing. Okay. So it's great to know, thank you. My question was, when, when we, have to, we, we have to end up. Uh, uh, when, 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 when will the drugs end? Oh, well. <laughs> That's pretty much it. All right, you guys. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to see the PowerPoint, you may want to move to this side of the room. Yeah, the next presentation is a unfortunately large thing supporting the building. The next presentation is a PowerPoint, so yeah. Okay. Uh huh. That's what I was saying.
nobody needs to see anything. Everybody has a seat. You can see uh, the wall, okay? Yeah, I really do. Uh, This is a view of our block in the 1930s in the heyday of Market Street. A uh, lot of pedestrian activity, a uh, lot of uh, entertainment and uh, retail venues all along Market Street. Uh, it was really the place to be at this, uh, the heart of San Francisco. Uh, there are over 400 people on the sidewalk in this photo, which is pretty typical for the 1930s uh, in this part of town. Uh, today, it's a little more subdued. Uh, about 60% of the retail on the block is vacant. Uh, the other uh, retail struggles to survive to a large degree. Uh, and there are only 26 people in this photo, uh, which is pretty typical of a, a, a nice sunny day on Market Street uh, today. At the back of the site, this is the Turk Street facade uh, back in the 1940s. It was also very busy. It was one of the, the primary uh, uh, travel routes into downtown uh, for vehicles and uh, also pedestrian traffic. Uh, you can see the Dalt Hotel uh, was there at that time. Uh, and uh, most of the retail that fronted Market Street also had back uh, retail frontage on Church Street and uh, had customer access there as well. Uh, this is what it looks like today. Uh, Ground floor is entirely boarded up on the Turk Street side. There's still a few retailers on Market Street, but uh, Turk Street has no uh, retail activity or access other than some back doors uh, for exiting. Uh, we've, uh, when we bought the building, there was some graffiti art on the building, and we've continued to add to that to try to prevent uh, you know, actual graffiti on the building, so try to keep it artistic in a sense. Uh, but there's really no reason to be on Turk Street because there's nothing to go to there other than to, to just pass that whole block. Uh, you can tell this photo is uh, probably about a year old. Uh, about a year ago, uh, the Tenderloin Housing Clinic in concert with the police department uh, removed all the parking on this side of Turk Street because this, uh, because of the lack of eyes on the street and the pedestrian activity, this was the place where most of the drug dealing was 